Hello again, welcome to IndyCar. It's the 26th of July today. Um, now, I've got two things that, very briefly. I'm going to keep this brief today because what I have to say is not going to take very long. Um, but a couple of things that um, puzzled me today. The first one, which is bizarre to say the very least, is that since yesterday's live stream broadcast of IndyCar for the first time in almost two weeks, at the point where uh, I came back into the car to, to make the broadcast yesterday, uh, according to Facebook, at least, uh, the number of viewers reached in the two weeks when I wasn't broadcasting anything at all was 103,000. Now, that's a pretty good number for, for IndyCar to be at, and it's um, probably what I would want it to be at at, at this stage in the game anyway. Um, but imagine my surprise this morning when I came back to the site, came back to the page this morning to have a look at how... Uh, yesterday's video, which attracted several thousand views, um, should have added to that viewer reach, only to discover that 10,000 views had mysteriously been wiped off the total. So from 103,000, when I wasn't broadcasting anything at all uh, in the last two weeks, IndyCar's reach has dropped to 93,000 as soon as I broadcast something. Now, anybody with a, a logical mind must realise that that arithmetic cannot add up. If we were at 103,000 before the broadcast yesterday, and the broadcast has reached, say, somewhere between five and 10,000 people yesterday, then that figure should have crept up just a bit. Remember, it's an average worked out over a month. So unless somebody in Facebook has deliberately massaged the figures, uh, which is, of course, entirely possible, then I can't account for where this loss has come from because we should have seen at least a slight uptake. Uh, somewhere in the region of two or three thousand should have been added to the hundred and three thousand, instead of which we're seeing a net loss. Now, I can only conclude that this is down to Facebook manipulating the figures again, uh, probably to give me the impression that I've massively, or oh, become massively unpopular overnight. Now, which do you think is the most likely? Have I become massively uh, unpopular since yesterday or not? I don't think so, somehow or other. Uh, and I feel that, um, as usual, Facebook is playing its games with this site. Anyway, the second thing, which again strikes a, an alarming discordant note of dissonance in my brain this morning, is a reaction to yesterday's programme from a number of um, SNP supporters who have told me, and I've heard this actually many times before, that we shouldn't hold a new independence referendum until support for independence rises back to something like the level it was at at the point of Brexit, which was about 58%. Now remember, a lot of people have said that 60% should be the trigger point of support to have a referendum. However, this neglects the obvious flaw in that logic, which is that people will not decide to vote for independence unless they have an actual opportunity to vote for independence. And that means there needs to be a date set for a referendum in order for a campaign to be launched, which is there to increase that support, to persuade people to support independence. So without a date, without a referendum, there can't be that increase in support. So this is the, the catch-22. We can't have a referendum without the support. We can't have a support without the referendum. Which is it going to be? And I think somebody uh, in the high castles of uh, the SNP government needs to decide which one of these is going to come first because support for independence can't be driven upwards without a campaign. Without a campaign, there can be no referendum anyway because the referendum needs to have a campaign in which to persuade people to vote to support independence. So the logic is a, a vicious circle it keeps coming back to the same problem. You can't have the referendum without the support, and you can't have the support without the referendum date. So what I'm saying here is that the logic of we must see a, a, a rise in support before we dare to have another referendum is bollocks, basically, if you pardon the expression. We need to convince people to support independence. We can't do that unless the SNP says that there will be a referendum at a certain time. That gives us a clear time frame in which to work. And obviously there needs to be a campaign. And as I mentioned yesterday, at the moment, there isn't the money to mount a campaign. So I think the real reason why there is not going to be a referendum in the next 
few months and per perhaps not even in the next 12 months is simply that the money isn't there to finance an SNP campaign or an SNP-led campaign uh, with which to win over the voters. So I think it's a bit disingenuous to say that we have to wait until support rises before we have a referendum, when in actual fact there is no reason for people to change their, um, their either their support or lack of support for independence because no arguments have been made in favour of it by an official campaign. So we are, as I said before, in a catch-22, a chicken and egg situation except that we don't even have the chicken or the egg at the moment. We have nothing at all. We're basically sitting in a vacuum uh, echo chamber where nothing is happening and nobody is saying anything and nobody is making any moves. Now, I do know, uh, and somebody pointed this out to me yesterday, and it is obviously true, that the Holyrood Parliament does not sit again until the end of uh, August. I think it's the 31st of August it comes back. So it's had an extremely long holiday. Um, and in the meantime, nothing is happening. And in the meantime, we're being told that we must somehow raise support to 60% before we dare to have another referendum for fear of losing it. Now, yes, the stakes are high, and if we lost a, another referendum, it would be a disaster. But then again, it was a disaster the last time. I really don't understand this way of thinking, uh, this, this way of thinking that somehow uh, it's up to the people to decide when the referendum is. It isn't. It can't be, because people cannot put a, um, a bill before Parliament. Only the SNP government can do that. It is up to the politicians to set the date for the referendum. And before they can even do that, they need to decide to present the bill again, uh, this time in the new session of Parliament, which starts at the end of August. So there should be an announcement made at some point, presumably in early August, and I would hope that it would happen certainly after the lifting of restrictions or even around the same time, which says that they are going to present this bill to Holyrood, and there will be a date set for that at least, which will give us some kind of time frame for a decision on when we might hear what the date is, which would be several weeks after the bill is laid before the House, there is a debate, then there are amendments, there's a more debate, then there's a vote, and finally, after weeks of thrashing it around, we might end up knowing when this referendum is going to be held. But in the meantime, nobody can expect to change anyone's mind about independence, unless it's on an individual level, um, you know, just by talking to friends and family and neighbours and workmates about it. But at the same time, that is putting a burden on people, which isn't really fair, because there is no campaign for independence at the moment. There's no money to launch the campaign. There's no date for the referendum. There's not even a date for when we might see the bill uh, being laid before the House. So everything is held in abeyance. And at the moment, it would be nice to even hear a slight hint uh, from members of the SNP uh, in our sanctum that there will be a date forthcoming for the presentation of this bill and it will be announced. It's like we have to wait for an announcement of a date which will then set the date for something else which will then set the date for something else. By the time we've gone through all of these steps, most of this year will be gone. And by the time we hear when the referendum is going to happen, we'll probably be at Christmas because that is the speed at which Holyrood appears to work. And no politicians from the SNP government appear to be in a rush uh, to reconvene Parliament any earlier, despite the, the current so-called emergency, which we're in the middle of at the moment with COVID. However, I've just looked at the figures um, for COVID in Scotland today. Uh, the death rate is still falling. The hospitalisation rate is still high, but it's on the way back down. The infection rate is also falling. The rolling seven-day average continues to drop, uh, and it's dropping at a steady rate. It's in a, a sort of steep decline at the moment, heading back down towards where it should be, which is almost zero, with, with the number of cases uh, being reported is you know less than 100 per day. But at the moment, that's not the case. We've got something like 1,500 cases a day being announced, uh, and several thousand obviously by the time you get to the end of a week 
but as I say, the average is coming down. So I would anticipate by the 9th of August that the S&P will lift the restrictions that are currently still in place at level zero, uh, which I think should uh, mean that it will be open season again for marches and rallies and open air events in support of independence. So the people, if you like, us, the ones who have been left out of the loop at the moment, we will be ready to go uh, as soon as the restrictions are lifted. And then we have to wait for a date to to know when the date is for the date of something else. So we will have, um, first of all, the SMB has to tell us when they're putting the bill before Holyrood. Holyrood then needs to tell us or vote on it and then tell us what the date of the referendum will be. So we have to wait for these stages to, to go through this process. Now this process, this legal process, is very much a bind and Despite everything else, we, we also know from several leaked documents which have been made public recently that there is no need at all for Scotland to wait for a Section 30 order before it holds an independence referendum of its own. Any time we want to hold a referendum on anything we like, uh, it's fine. We, we don't need to wait for permission to, to talk about or to decide upon anything that pertains to Scotland at all, since we are a separate country in a union with another separate country. We've never needed to have a Section 30 order. And this adherence to this is just another delay, basically. It, it, it's pointless. We, we, we know the answer is going to be no. We know it's not going to happen. We know Boris Johnson is not going to sign a Section 30 order. And we know that the British government is not going to cooperate in any way, shape or form with any kind of referendum in Scotland. But that is immaterial. We could simply uh, leapfrog over this hurdle by simply naming the date of the referendum and starting working towards it. And to hell with what happens in London. Uh, let them puff and blow because there is nothing they can do to stop the democratic process here other than invading Scotland with troops and uh, doing a, a, a Spanish style. Uh, vicious and violent clampdown on the peaceful citizens of Scotland, which I think, to be honest with you, is highly unlikely given the deep unpopularity that the U UK is enjoying internationally at the moment, that they, they don't want to make themselves look even worse than they already do. So I think everybody's ready. Um, we will be ready um, come, I think, August the 9th, the, the date of the final release of the population from the COVID restrictions should see dates coming thick and fast and that's what I expect to see happening but I do not accept for a moment that the level of support for independence needs to rise to 60% before a date for a referendum can be set. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. If you want to increase the numbers of people supporting independence you need to let them know that they're going to have an opportunity to vote upon it at least and then you need to have a campaign to persuade them of the new merits of the new offer of independence and what this new offer of independence will be. And none of that is, has been made known to anybody yet. So we can't expect support for independence to rise, not until that information is made public. So I guess my contention is today two things. First of all, Facebook are a bunch of liars when it comes to uh, viewing figures for this program and I'm sure many others. Uh, of the pro-independence variety. And secondly, we cannot simply wait for support to rise. It's not going to rise until we have a campaign. And those basically are the two points I wanted to make this morning. Anyway, I'll catch up with you again tomorrow. Remember to tune in and I expect another 10,000 of you to have disappeared probably by tomorrow morning. See you soon. Bye-bye.